Hey there everyone, they here back again with another video and welcome to React Native series. A really pro great series that will help you to not only just become a React Native developer but also to have portfolio apps with the series absolutely free on YouTube. If that doesn't deserve a subscribe, I don't know what is. And a big shout out to Hashnode for sponsoring the entire series and in this video we'll walk through with the haptic feedback which is a really interesting concept to give your users some feedback that can be on the touch of a button maybe on notification, maybe whatever. The concept will remain same and you can implement it wherever you like. Whatever the activity suits you, great. So in this video, I'll walk you through how you can inject haptic feedback and how you can actually learn from the documentation and sometimes when the documentation goes a little bit bizarre, how you can actually figure that out. Let's go ahead and try this out. So first and foremost, the package that we'll be using is React Native Haptic Feedback. Pretty popular project, uh, supports the TypeScript and uh, easy, just copy, install it. But there is no docs available. You have to go on their homepage to actually look through what documentation that they are giving us or supporting. So the installation is pretty good. Uh, just basic install. Then there is a concept of linking. Now this is a really, really interesting concept. You can manually link this or you can try this. I'll show you how actually you can do this. And there are a couple of interesting concepts of how uh, this actually works through. So let me go ahead and work on with this. All right, so step one is just close this and uh, we'll open this in a second. But first, let's go ahead and install this. The installation is pretty simple, pretty obvious. Let me go ahead and move this up. Yeah, better now. And we'll simply install this. Pretty simple install. Now, the next step is uh, simply to have React Native link, React Native haptic feedback. Let's go ahead and try this out and see what happens. Obviously, we never installed React Native, so we have to go with uh, NPX version of it, React Native or React uh, Package Executor. If we go ahead, it says, hey, unknown command link, what is this? And how does it work? I don't know. All right, so this means that this uh, case has uh, flopped. Uh, so we'll go with the manual way. This is where something really, really interesting happens. So it says manual installation for iOS and Android, and you can go ahead and just follow these uh, process for Xcode as well. I'll just follow them for the Android. And this is exactly same. So first it says that open the main application.java. Let me zoom this up much better for the mobile viewers. Uh, open the main dot application. Pretty simple. I can just go up into Android, app, build, not build, my bad, source, main, Java, and main application. <laughs> yes, it's, it's buttered down right there. Uh, yeah, but you have to open this up. Now, once you go up here, it says you have to add a new React Native haptic feedback package. All right. Uh, but in order to actually have this package, uh, the line number, this line needs to be there. So import this package. We have already installed that. Go ahead and install that. And then I'll show you there's something <laughs> really interesting going on. Uh, but this is a process you need to go through to actually learn and understand this. Then it says that you can actually go ahead and add a new React Native package, haptic feedback as a package. Uh, to the list returned by get packages. Now, those who are not familiar with it, it's actually super simple. You can come up here. There is a sample line written that if you want to have this packages or something like this, you can actually use this. Uh, so go ahead and use this line. Don't just uh, mindlessly copy and paste the syntax. That is not always a good idea. Uh, paste it up here. There we go. We have got and returned this package. Uh, save this. This is the step one. Then you have to simply go ahead and append these line, Android settings.gradle. So make sure you go into this and we have to include uh, both of this line. Better to just simply hit and copy all of this because it's a long line. You can see this. Yeah, that's that's a big one. So we'll go into Android settings.gradle. So let's go back and we'll close this one. So in the Android, make sure you close this one. There is this uh, settings.gradle. Go up here and we have to actually include these two lines. There we go. Uh, so we have included this. So there we go. Include this one and include project this, whatever that is. Okay. Save this. All right. Uh, we have saved this one as well. There is one more step going on. Uh, that needs to go into, notice this very carefully, Android app build.gradle. Because uh, if you'll just close this one, you'll find this uh, build.gradle here. We don't want to do this. It's saying that need to go into Android app and build.gradle. Okay, Android, then app, and then inside this, we'll open this build.gradle. If you'll scroll a little bit, close this, uh, you'll find there's a lot of section, but there is a dependencies section somewhere. There we go, dependencies. And here you have to implement this. So we'll just uh, inject it up here, wherever you like. 
and i'll just copy and uh, paste this copy this and there we go paste this yeah there is this much of the process you need to go through with this okay now interestingly you have done all of this you have to go and similarly do for the ios project as well uh, but it's saying that if the linking is not happening manually then you have to do all of this i'll show you something really interesting uh, and then you can go ahead and use this. Okay, let's me go ahead and try to use this or show that how this can be used. Uh, we'll first import this line. All right, super easy to go ahead and work on with. Let's close all of this. The usage part is super easy. Not index, the app. All right, we'll first go up here. We'll get this. All right, super easy. Then the next is uh, these options. You have to go ahead and mark them. All right. So options, you can declare them uh, wherever you like or wherever you think that that makes sense. So you can go ahead and do this. I'll I'll put them at the top. So just here. Yeah, I don't know where the right place is, but uh, we'll just keep them at the top. Now, we are actually calling this method on roll on dice roll tap. So we definitely want to trigger this event when somebody actually puts this and whole random and dice are all there all right so this is super super easy there is nothing complex onto this one i'll minimize this and then we'll come here there we go now we are using the impact light but there are other options you can study about them there is impact light medium heavy bridget soft notification success there's a lot there's a lot make sure you also read about what is being supported now, once I go ahead and save this, uh, sometimes you need to actually restart the app, but there will be something interesting that you are going to see. Uh, right now, if I go ahead and click on this, there is no haptic feedback that is coming up. When you install these kinds of packages, it is important that you restart your app. And this is where the magic actually happens. It says, hey, not available. Yes, I'll make it available. Close this. Let's see some of the errors. Ah, don't know this. And we need run Android. And yes, A on Android, and it will just reload this. And your haptic feedback is not gonna come immediately like this. And bundling the app, there we go. We see the error. This is exactly what I was waiting for it. Okay, uh, yes, the error will come. Notice here, look at the error very closely, what just happened and how we can actually resolve this. If you don't read the errors, you're not a programmer. The error says the native module RR native feedback is override. Yes, we are overriding it. We are using another package to actually make our life easier. But the problem that is happening is this get package method, uh, the module is being created twice. So what is happening now in the backend is uh, that this linking thing, although when we ran the command, this is not happening, but this actually happened behind the scene for you. So you have to go ahead and make sure this list, uh, the package get package doesn't get it twice. So you have to go back. And this is not something that uh, is kind of a kind of a to do list that, hey, you always do this, you resolve the error. But you have to read this. And this is exactly why I have chosen uh, and shown you this errors and stuff. Now I have to go back into Android this because this is where I'm importing this in the app source main and Java and main application dot Java. And we actually don't have to import this package, although the documentation says it, but we don't have to uh, because the linking is happening automatically now. Once you comment this out, save this up. Uh, if you try to reload, obviously, this is not going to work because you obviously have to restart the package up here. Sometimes even you have to do the cleanup. So let's see what is going to happen and what is going to work for us. We'll see it together. All right, let's run this. Yes, I want to run it on Android. And it's going to take a couple of seconds to debug and install this. And uh, building the app. There we go. Now I can simply go ahead and roll the device. And I can actually see this uh, roll the device. Yeah, it sometimes does the refresh like this. I can feel the haptic feedback. Uh, there is no way of how can I uh, transfer it to you to show that, hey, the haptic feedbacks are coming in. But yeah, the app is running. I can feel it. You can trust my words if you want to. Otherwise, you can just run your app on your own. But this is a really, really interesting use case about how sometimes uh, the documentation could be a little bit off uh, because the things have updated and how you can figure them out, read the docs and can figure out. I hope this uh, particular video have added some values to your life and have taught you a little bit about the mobile app development. In case you want to write an article about this one, this will be super, super helpful for a ton of developers. That will be your contribution. Go ahead and write an article using Hashnode. Uh, contribute that into our series, into our GitHub repository, 
share it with me on uh, LinkedIn and Instagram using uh, the hashtag or the at the rate hash node. They will be super happy that, hey, you are contributing, you are learning something. I will be super happy and that's the goal. So we have done this. Uh, let's officially close our fifth app. There is an assignment included as well. Let me show you that as well. So what we want to do is in this assignment is we don't want to have just one roll the dice. We want to have two roll the dice. Both should actually generate different kind of images. Not only that, we also want to have a background pattern. This time we want some really classy and amazing background pattern in which uh, the thing should be generated on the go. Some circles, uh, some triangles, some rectangles. And if you want, you can have a, you can add colors to them. That will definitely add something more to what you have learned in this series. And that will be super helpful. Uh, really happy, uh, really excited that we have finished halfway long. There is a lot more to cover up. Uh, subscribe this and uh, let's catch up in the next one.